thank you for tuning in to any of our videos. We also want to just ask your forgiveness if anything in this comes off offensive or abrasive. It is not our intent to cause division. What we would like you to do is enter into just a relationship as a believer with us, knowing that we're as much of a work in progress as you are, and that you would continue to pray for Nehemiah Abilene. It's awkward. I know it serves a purpose. I know God, God is having us do it so that other people can experience that we experience here, but it still makes it awkward and uncomfortable. Uh, but yeah, that was the first time I've been in a meeting since I, since I picked up uh, back in November or back in December. And uh, it was just good. It was a, you know, a tight little meeting. But then what came to mind, what kept coming to mind is the, these, uh, the, the people that are against the 12 steps. I'm not going to slander them, right? But, but we all know, like, there are certain people that have these other ideas of what it is to find Jesus. And they're the, they're the only way, right? And, uh, and I just disagree completely with that. However, what I noticed is there's a men of God, about 25 of them last night, that have influenced a culture that has tried to make it impossible to speak the name of Jesus. And even those in leadership now are declaring the name of Jesus. So it's not that we go against the system, it's that we influence it so completely by who's in us that the system begins to change. And I think there's, there's somebody that used to be on my board that teaches that, that, uh, that, that constantly tries to just dog out and go against those other groups and, and say they're the only way and it's like man if you were who you said you were you would have already changed the system yeah. if you believe that christ in us is the hope of glory if you believe that greater in me is greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world then you would go out to those places and you wouldn't have to pick a fight because who's in you is greater and bigger and all you have to do is surrender die to yourself and let him rule and reign and those systems begin to change you can't help but influence if god is real if he's real to you, I know he's real, but is he real to you? If he's real to you and he's living and dwelling, if you've really picked up your cross, not to be seen carrying a cross, not to be known for carrying a cross, but really picked it up and said, God, use me, whatever it looks like. And then your character begins to influence those around you. It won't, you won't have a choice in it. The environment won't have a choice because you have rule and dominion and you reign over it. And I got to watch y'all do that last night. I got to watch a group of broken men that love Jesus go in and, and, and turn an NA meeting. And, and not by trying to, but it turned into a church meeting. That's just what it was. And it wasn't, nobody was offended by it. You know, I, how many meetings have you gone to where people are like, oh, gee, ah, boy, they'll shut you down. But when you live it, when the greatest gospel you preach is the one you walk, your environment changes, the atmosphere shifts. That's what we're trying to do in the whole city. That's what we're called to do in this city. Nehemiah, I had a profound revelation. It's no coincidence that we changed our name to Nehemiah and we're no longer the men of Nehemiah. Because Nehemiah went to Jerusalem to restore a city. And you're going to be called to many cities to restore that city. And we don't need a name. Listen, it doesn't matter if my name is Lee or Bryce or Rico. It doesn't matter what our name is. Nehemiah's coming. The Comforter's coming. It's on its way. It's in progress. Do you, have y'all read the book of Nehemiah yet? Anybody? Who has not read it? I commission you that if you have someone's name on your shirt, you may want to go read their autobiography. So it's not very long. It's pretty short, pretty impactful, a lot of meat in it. Pretty good. Listen, it's got the best one-line prayers of any book of the bible i think most powerful so go read it but it wasn't until he moved he had favor he was serving with excellence in a place and found out he didn't even know that it was destroyed and then he goes back and he says uh, he has this downcast he has influence with the king because he does everything excellent and listen when you do everything to the best of your ability i promise you other people are going to hate you for it but you'll have influence with the king just telling you not that I'm a king, I'm just telling you. Look, certain things are noticed. Gratitude is noticed. Your ability to do things excellently and pour your whole heart into it because you want something new gets noticed. And in that, listen, favor ain't fair, but it's usually based on your ability to surrender to a situation. Your favor will carry you to the end of your faith.